Okay, looks like I can get this room back for just a little bit. Okay, I was on number 10. So number 10, you have a different variable, different independent variable, f of u. And we have u over 1 plus the natural log of u. So u is like the x. All right, so I see quotient rule here. Um, because I have two terms down here, I can't like split this into two different things. So I'm just going to apply the quotient rule. So the derivative of this should be the derivative of the top. The derivative of u with respect to u should be 1 times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom. So we have two terms down here. So the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of natural log of u is the same as us saying what is the derivative of natural log of x because again u is like x is here because it's the independent variable. So derivative of natural log of u should just be 1 over u. All right, that's the derivative of the bottom. Then times the top, then all over the bottom squared. So when I square the bottom, I get 1 plus natural log u, that whole quantity squared. Now this just becomes 1 plus natural log of u. Then this is going to become, right here, that's a 1, so minus 1, and then over 1 plus natural log of u squared. The 1's cancel, and you have natural log u over 1 plus the natural log of u, that quantity squared. There it is. All right, number 11. We have um, g of x equals natural log of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. All right, we got a lot going on here. Got chain rule. We've got log and inside log. We've got some stuff. I do notice there's multiplication here. I could split this into two logs, and I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do some algebra first. Multiplication inside of a single log turns into um, two logs with addition between them. And then I can go a little bit further. I realize that this is the same as natural log of x squared minus 1 to the half power. And if I have natural log of something to a power, that power can come out. So I'm really just doing a lot of algebra here just to help me get a nice clean derivative without having to do too much um, extra work. I think that's pretty clean right there. Um, we cannot pull the 2 out because this is two terms, so the squared would have to be on both of them for that to happen. I also can't split this into two logs because the property works when you have multiplication inside. Property, we do not have a property to split up a log when we have subtraction or addition inside, so that's as far as I can go. Now the derivative of this is derivative of natural log of x with respect to x, that's just 1 over x and then plus a half that's going to come along for the ride. And now a little chain rule. Derivative of natural log of u, or of something, is, is going to be 1, that's multiplication, 1 over this times the derivative of what's in here. Two terms, derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 1 is 0, so we're just going to get 2x here. This 2 and this 2 cancel this x will go on top. So I can rewrite that as separated here. This is equal to 1 over x out front plus I had an x on top, I have x squared minus 1 on the bottom. And that's probably good enough. I could, I could get a common denominator, but I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, let's compare that to number 12, h of x equals natural log of x, and instead of times, here they have plus square root of x squared minus 1. So this is a good problem. It's illustrating the fact that 
I can't do the algebra that I did on the previous one. I cannot do that here because that's addition inside of a log. And so there is no property of, of logs that allows me to split this up. So I've just got to attack it as it is. The derivative of this should be derivative of natural log of something should be one over that entire something times the derivative of what's in here. I have two terms here and here, so I'm going to have parentheses. Derivative of x is 1 plus the derivative of this. Now another chain rule. Derivative of the square root of something is 1 over 2 times the square root of that something. Okay, times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x. That finishes off my derivative inside here. And all I can see here is that 2 and that 2 cancel. Uh, I have 1 over x plus square root of x squared minus 1 times this thing becomes 1 and then plus x over square root of x squared minus 1. I don't think I want to multiply any of that together. Although, oh no, they're not the same. Never mind. So that's it. I'll just leave it like that. The book might simplify that, but this is number 12, so that's not in the back of the book. It's good enough. All right, 13. So 13. These are starting to get uglier and uglier. We have capital G of Y. So Y is our independent variable. We treat it like X. Natural log, and then we have a fraction here. We have in the top 2y plus 1 to the fifth, and then over square root of y squared plus 1. Okay, just keep in mind that whole thing is inside that natural log. So I'm going to do some algebra first. I'm going to use the fact that if I have division in a single log, I can split this into two logs with division. So it'll be the numerator all that stuff inside of one of the logs minus another log and then this. And watch the way I'm going to write that. Write that to the one half instead of square root. I'm doing that so I can pop these powers out. The power can come out. Again, that's, that's not me doing a derivative. That's just me using properties of logs. Okay. And now here I will go ahead and take derivative. So g prime of y is, all right, 5 is going to come for the ride. Derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something times the derivative of what's inside. Derivative of what's inside is just 2. That's kind of like the 2x, right? So derivative of 2x is just 2. Derivative of 1 is 0. So that's it. That's all I have there. Minus 1 half is going to come for the ride. Derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something times derivative of what's inside here, which again, y is like the x, so this is just going to be 2y. And then derivative of 1 is 0. So that's it. I can cancel these 2's. Over here, I can put this 2 and that 5 together. So I should get a 10 on top, and then 2y plus 1. And then I'll have a minus, right? There's a minus. And then the only thing left over here is a y on top and a y squared plus 1. That looks good. Number 14. A little, gr a little g of r is r squared times the natural log of 2r plus 1. All right. So r is like the x here. r is the independent variable. And so we're going to treat it like that. And I have a product right here. I can see that product rule right there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just go right for the derivative here. So it's the derivative of the first one times this, derivative of this one times this. So the derivative of r squared is 2r 
times the second one plus derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something times derivative of what's inside of it, which is just 2, times the first function, r squared. And I suppose we could just rewrite it, clean it a little bit. I can just put this 2r squared on top, so 2r squared over 2r plus 1. There we go. All right, number 15. Capital F of S, S is the independent variable, is natural log, this is the way they write it, natural log, natural log S. So what that really means is natural log of natural log of S. So you have S is sitting inside of a natural log, but that natural log is sitting inside of another natural log. So this is chain rule. The derivative of this, we start with the outside. The derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something. 1 over that something is natural log S times, now I've done this, the derivative of what's in here. Derivative of natural log of S is 1 over S. And then times the derivative of what's inside here, derivative of s is 1 because it's our independent variable, so 1. So this just becomes 1 over, I multiply this times this, I could write it like this, s natural log s. That's it. Man, my s's look like 5's. Hmm, where am I? 17. y equals tan, and then they're going to use a bracket, but remember brackets just like a parenthesis, tan of natural log, parenthesis, ax plus b, close parenthesis, close bracket. So we have composition again, tangent of natural log of a linear expression. So I'm going to start from the outside and work my way in. y prime, oh, and, and the independent variable here is x, we're assuming a and b are constants. So derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that something. I don't have to use brackets. I'll use them reluctantly. Okay, that's derivative of tangent, so I've done that. Move inside, derivative now of natural log of this. Derivative of natural log of something is one over that something. Okay, so I've done derivative of natural log of something. Times derivative of what's inside uh, a constant times x, right? Constant's going to come along for the ride. Derivative of x is 1, so that's just going to be a. And then derivative of that constant is 0. So I would have a parenthesis here if I had more than one term, but I don't. It's just a. So what I could do for a final answer is just slide this a on top. I can move that whole fraction out in front of the secant squared or just leave it at the back. All right. 18, ooh, that doesn't look good. Capital H of Z. Z is the independent variable. Is natural log of the square root of A squared minus Z squared. Z is our variable, A is a constant, over A squared plus Z squared. All right, I'm gonna do some algebra first. This is natural log of a squared minus z squared over a squared plus z squared. All of that to the one half, that's what that means. Check something here. Okay. Now the reason I did that is because I want to pop that one half out. Because I have natural log of something to a power, that power can drop out. So this will be equal to one half sitting in front of natural log of a squared minus z squared over a squared plus z squared. And now I have division inside of a log, which means it splits into two logs. But keep in mind, I have a one half sitting out in front of all that. So when this becomes two logs, it'll be this first log minus, because it's division, second log has the denominator in it. 
Now, the one half can distribute through. So there'll be one half in front of that and one half in front of that. I don't want to write all that again. I'll just leave it. Let's, let's go ahead and get a derivative. H prime of Z should be, let's just let one half come for the ride because it's attached to all that. So one half and in parentheses, I need to take derivative of this. Derivative of natural log of something is one over that something times the derivative of what's inside. Now we're differentiating with respect to z, so derivative of a squared is zero, it's a constant, so that's gone. Now derivative of negative z squared, the two comes out, we get negative two z. And we're done here. Now we move on minus Derivative of natural log of something is one over that something. I need to erase this. One over that something times derivative of what's inside, zero, and then derivative of that's two z. And then all that's in parentheses because of that one half out there. And if I distribute a one half through, watch, when I distribute one half through to this thing, and then to this thing, it's going to kill off this two and that two. So I should have just the negative z that was here over this. So negative z over a squared minus z squared. And then I'm going to have a minus, and then here I'll have a z. So minus z over a squared plus z squared. I'm happy with that. Number 20, root x times e to the x. Product rule. You see that product between those two? Okay, so the derivative of this is the derivative of the first one times the second one, plus derivative of the second one times the first one. So just remember, derivative of e to the x, right, on that second one is itself, and then times the first one. Derivative of root x is one over two root x, then times the second one. So there's your product rule. Um, yes, you could clean up. You could even factor out an e to the x. Not necessary, but let me just show you. If I did factor out an x, this is what I would have. And then I could even get a common denominator. I could multiply the bottom here by 2 root x, top here by 2 root x. If I did that, I would have e to the x. And then this right here would become 2 times x, because root x times root x is x. That's 2x plus 1, so 1 plus 2x. Then over my common denominator, 2 root x. I mean, this would have been correct, okay, with that gone and that gone. But I'm just showing you, you could get that also. That one wasn't too bad. Am I almost done? Oh my gosh. Okay, 25, no, 22, e to the x over 1 minus e to the x. All right, quotient rule here. Quotient rule. Derivative of the top is itself times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom. Derivative of 1 is 0. Cover up the minus. Derivative e to the x is itself, but it's minus. So negative e to the x times the top, which is e to the x, all over the bottom, which is 1 minus e to the x squared. All right, let's try and figure out what this is. This is e to the x minus e to the x minus e to the x squared, right? That's what that would mean to multiply it times itself. But if you multiply these two, you get e to the 2x. So that's what that, that's what that second multiplication gives you, minus e to the 2x. And then minus minus is plus. Then again, e to the x times e to the x is e to the x squared, which is e to the 2x. Ah, look at those. They're going to cancel all over 1 minus e to the x 
squared, this goes away, this goes away. All you're left with is e to the x over this. Interesting. I know I'm going fast, but this is a lot of problems. 24. y equals e to the negative 2t. t is the independent variable here. Cosine 4t. Product rule. You have a product right there. So y prime will be the derivative of the first one. Now we have to be a little careful here. Derivative of e to anything is itself. So I put e to the negative 2t. But then I have to do chain rule. Times derivative of what's up here with respect to t, that'll just be negative 2. Okay, so I'm doing product rule. So that was the derivative of the first one is done. Times the second one. Plus, now derivative of the second one, this is chain rule. Derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of that something. Times the derivative of what was inside, derivative of 4t is 4 and then finish off the product rule, e to the negative 2t. Clean up time. Negative 2 times this times this. I'm just going to put negative 2 e to the negative 2t cosine uh, 4t. And let's see, we're going to have a minus here also. So minus 4. I have an e to the negative 2t again. Then this time sine of 4t. And I also see a GCF, even though, I mean, I could say I'm done. I'm, I'm just going to show you. You can pull a negative 2 e to the negative 2t out. Right? They both have negative 2. They both have an e to the negative 2t. So if I pull the negative 2 out, all that's left here is the cosine 4t. And then I pulled the negative 2 out, so I'll have plus 2 and then sine 4t. That's 24. Twenty-five. Y equals five to the negative one over X. All right, so this is kind of like E to the something, except instead of E, we have A to the something. And we talked about that, or I showed you the formula for that at the beginning. So the derivative of this, the derivative of a to something is itself times natural log of a, so for us natural log of 5, times the derivative of what was up here. Now remember, that's the same as negative 1 x to the negative 1. So if I, if I pop that x up, this is what I have. If I take derivative of this, Negative 1 pops out, you get uh, positive 1, x to the negative 2. That's the same as 1 over x squared. So the derivative of this top piece is just 1 over x squared. That's it. All right, 28. y equals e to the u minus e to the negative u over e to the u plus e to the e to the negative u all right let's try quotient rule Derivative of the top, two different terms, we'll do them each one at a time. Derivative of e to the u, oh yeah, u is the independent variable, so it's like the x. e to the u derivative is itself. Okay, I'm still doing derivative of the top. Minus, derivative of e to the negative u is itself, but be real careful here, times the derivative of what was up here, which is actually negative 1. We didn't have that happen here because the derivative of what's up here is 1. So we, we had a 1 out here, but we didn't need to write it. 
That's the derivative of the top. Times the bottom, with no derivative, minus the derivative of the bottom, okay? Derivative of e to the u is itself, plus the derivative of e to the negative u. We just did that, it's right here. It's going to be e to the negative u times negative 1. Okay, so that's the derivative of the bottom. Then times the top. All of this over the bottom squared. Okay. That looks ugly. I'm not done. Clean up time. Equals. All right. This is... Let me just try and save myself some time. This minus minus become a plus, so that is not there. Okay, and then over here, let's see. This minus and this plus turn that into a minus, and then this isn't here. And notice that this and this together, they're the same thing. So this is e to the u plus e to the negative u squared minus e to the u minus e to the negative u squared again all over e to the u plus e to the negative u squared. Yes. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, I should have paid a little more attention to this. Um, but notice that if I do, if I split this back up into two fractions, this over this and this over this, this over this is one. Then we'll have minus, because that's a minus, this over this, which I could write as e to the u minus e to the negative u over e to the u plus e to the negative u all of that squared. So instead of squaring each one top and bottom, I just put them in a parenthesis and squared it. I'll leave it like that. 33. Man, this is a lot. Let me do, I think this is going to be my last one because I've got to go. 33. All right, 33, y equals natural log of e to the negative x plus x e to the negative x. All right, now you could just go with the straight derivative here and go after it. Um, I'm going to do some algebra first, watch. I'm going to factor out an e to the negative x and be left with 1 plus x. You see that? This has an e to the negative x. That has an e to the negative x. I just pull it out here, and this is what I would have. So if I distribute this back through, I get that. Now I've created a product, which allows me to split this into two logs with addition between them. So it's, it'll become the log of the first one plus the log of the second factor. And that's really nice because when you put natural log and e together, they're inverse functions. They kill each other off. All you're left with is what's up here. That's just negative x. Then plus natural log of 1 plus x. Wow, that is really clean. I can take derivative of that very, very easily. Derivative of this, derivative of negative x is negative 1 plus the derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over that something times the derivative of what's in here, which is just 1, so I don't really need anything there. Well, that is a super clean derivative. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess that's a good, good place to stop for today. So I got through, I'm going to pick up on 41 when I come back. So I have 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven problems to do tomorrow.